B-52 Stratofortress is truly a fortress in the ski. It qualifies for fierce, fire, and fury. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress has been in service with the U.S. Air Force since 1955 and has been commissioned for service until at least 2040. We say at least 2040 because its replacement has yet to displace the B-52 from any fight. It is the most feared long-range subsonic strategic bomber in the world, and it is considered one of the most reliable assets of the U.S. Air Fleet. It has struck fear in the hearts of adversaries in Vietnam, the Bosnian and Kosovo conflicts, the First and Second Persian Gulf Wars, the war in Afghanistan, and it has played a crucial role in suppressing ISIS. Battlefield foes can run and hide, but no one is out of the B-52's reach. This Cold War era plane still strikes fear in the heart of enemies more than 70 years after its first test flight. The origin of this aircraft dates back to the end of Second World War, when growing tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States brought the world to the brink of nuclear catastrophe. There was one problem. You can build an arsenal of nuclear weapons, but if you cannot deliver them to the target, your nuclear threat is, well, not really a threat. To address this problem, the United States sought to develop a long-range bomber that could deliver a nuclear payload behind the Iron Curtain. This sounds rather simple, right? Unlike any other strategic bomber before it, the plane had to be able to launch from the safety of the United States and strike any target on the globe. In 1946, the U.S. Army Air Force asked several aeronautical companies to work on this futuristic bomber project, and among all of them, it commissioned Boeing to bring to life its idea. The company presented a straight-wing design, powered by six turboprop engines, called the Model 462, which eventually became a prototype. However, it failed to meet the Air Force's demands due to its enormous size and low power. Boeing started the project from scratch and introduced a lighter aircraft with four turboprop engines, the Model 464. This time, the Air Force was satisfied and allowed Boeing to integrate nuclear capability into the aircraft, anticipating it could replace the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. This is how the Model 46429 was born, with a maximum speed of 450 miles per hour. In May 1948, the United States Air Force requested that the power plant switch from turboprop engines to the new Pratt & Whitney J-57 jet engines, which were used by the F-100 Super Sabre and F-8 Crusade. The new design was based on the B-47 Stratojet with a 35-degree swept wing, but numbering eight J-57 engines. In a last-ditch attempt to increase its maximum range, Boeing created a larger model, called the YB-52, that had a tandem cabin similar to the B-47. However, the first aircraft to fly was the second prototype, the XB-52, which after Boeing successfully tested, secured a contract to build 13 aircraft under the name B-52A. Of the 13 B-52As ordered, Boeing built only three, as the remaining 10 aircraft received various modifications and were completed as the B-52B, a model that would become the first to enter service. For the first 10 years of manufacture, Boeing applied numerous updates to improve the B-52B's capabilities. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress is a long-range heavy bomber capable of deploying nuclear bombs. Its maximum takeoff weight is 220 tons and it has a combat range of nearly 9,000 miles. The B-52 can fly from Chicago to Moscow without refueling, but if that is not far enough, the B-52 can refuel mid-flight and extend its range. Its maximum speed is 650 miles per hour, and it has a capacity to transport up to 70,000 pounds of weapons. Its power plant is composed of eight engines paired in pods and suspended by four pylons below, and forward of the leading edge of the wing. A unique characteristic about the Stratofortress is that it can perform crosswind landings, also known as a crab landing, with the cabin pointed towards the wind direction. 
but with the landing gear aligned towards the runway. This is possible because its main landing gear can rotate up to 20 degrees with respect to the center line of the aircraft. At the rear, early model versions, A through F featured a tail turret armed with 450 caliber machine guns manned by one gunner. On B-52G models, the tail turret became remote controlled, and more modern models use a remote controlled 20mm Vulcan cannon. Its in-flight refueling capability gives the B-52 an almost unlimited range. Starting in 1971, the B-52 was updated to carry up to 20 AGM-69 nuclear missiles, and eventually, the option to carry AGM-86 and AGM-137 cruise missiles was added. The nose of the B-52 was also retrofitted with an ANA-SQ-151 electro-optical vision system to improve its ability to operate safely at low level during the day and night. It consists of a forward-scanning infrared sensor system and low-light-level television. The U.S. Air Force stopped carrying nuclear bombs on B-52 in 2010 because military strategists determined the B-52 would not survive to penetrate modern air defenses. For this role, the U.S. Air Force relied on the B-2 Spirit, a stealth strategic bomber with a large bomb capacity. Starting in 2016, Boeing upgraded the Stratofortress internal rotary launchers to allow the aircraft to carry smart bombs within its bomb bay, which, until 2016, could only be carried on the wings. For more than 50 years, the B-52 Stratofortress has been the backbone of the U.S. strategic bombing force. It was used in combat operations as a long-range bomber, launching a wide variety of conventional weapons. It was also used in deterrence missions during the Cold War, continuously patrolling the skies with its nuclear weapons. The B-52 has set many records. One of them occurred in 1956 when four stratofortresses made a non-stop flight around the perimeter of North America in the so-called Operation Quick Kick, covering 15,500 miles in just 31 and a half hours while refueling in flight. At the same time, a B-52H set the world record for continuous flight without refueling for 12,500 miles, albeit without carrying any cargo. In 1963, the United States Strategic Air Command reached peak operational status with 650 B-52 aircraft spread over 38 air bases. During the Vietnam War, where they acted as conventional bombers for the first few months of the conflict, B-52s carried out more than 100 bombing missions. Older versions were replaced by B-52Ds, which increased the overall payload by 10 tons. These carried out 729 sorties, with only 30 B-52s lost during the conflict. In the midst of the Cold War, the B-52 acted as a nuclear deterrent, carrying out aerial patrol missions with powerful nuclear missiles over wide sectors. In 1982, the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy began including the B-52 in joint operations to cope with the growth of the Soviet naval fleet. The Stratofortresses increased their participation in maritime operations by carrying harpoon anti-ship missiles and by flying mining missions with precision-guided sea mines capable of being released over 40 miles from their splash point while cruising at 40,000 feet. In 1991, they were a major part of Operation Desert Storm, where they flew 1,620 sorties. Stratofortresses are estimated to have carried 40% of the bombs dropped by coalition air forces in the first Gulf War, including the cruise missile strike in January 1991 that initiated the bombing campaign. During this opening operation NOAA's Senior Surprise, or Secret Squirrel, seven B-52s traveled from Louisiana to the launch point near Iraq, where they released, for the first time in combat, GPS-guided missiles then returned safely upon completion of the 14,000-mile non-stop mission. All seven B-52s refueled mid-flight twice, some three times, and returned to home base after 35 and a half hours of continuous flight, setting a record for the longest bombing mission ever recorded. Although the B-2 Spirit and F-15 fighter bombers took a more prominent place during the turn of the century, 
The Strata Fortress was heavily involved in conflicts such as Iraq and the invasion of Afghanistan. The U.S. Air Force is working on new bombers to suit the needs of air warfare in the 21st century, especially with improved stealth and drone capabilities. However, the intention is to keep the B-52H in service until at least 2040. Boeing has built over 740 B-52s among all variants, and the U.S. Air Force continues to trust the B-52, as this legend of the sky continues to prove to be the most threatening and effective heavy bomber. Have a question or a perspective to share? Drop it in the comments section below. If you found this video as intriguing as we did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more thought-provoking content. Thank you very much for joining us for this video. See you next time on Fierce, Fire, and Fury.